Today we're going to talk about uh, WASI WebGPU, actually very recently renamed to WASI GFX. We'll go a little bit into why. Uh, learn how you can bring GPUs to WASM. You can build beautiful graphics and safely run AI with any GPU using a framework like this. Uh, my name's Sean Isom. I'm the founder of Renderlet. And I'm Mandy Berger, software engineer at Renderlet, focusing on WASI GFX. All right, let's jump right in. So how does uh, WASM work with GPUs today? Short answer is it doesn't. And this is very intentional by design in WASM. Um, but obviously, if you've used you know, rich web applications, there are ways to do this. Uh, usually in a browser, this goes over JavaScript bindings. So if you're to look at a framework uh, like Emscripten for C++, for example, this is a framework that lets you bring C++ code, compile it to WebAssembly, bring it into a browser, run it through a JS host. Uh, for things like WebGL, they have mapped that to the GLES APIs. You can use those headers and uh, communicate across the browser JavaScript bindings to the GPU APIs that are native to the browser runtime. Similarly, uh, in WGPU, if you're in the Rust community, uh, this, is, uh, this is exposed through WGPU. So you can run WGPU in a browser. Uh, it has a backend that will allow you to go over the JavaScript bindings into the backing browser APIs. So, so this, this is a system that works in a browser today. Uh, but what about different use cases? So in a pure WASI environment, let's say in headless applications or desktop or server side or something like that, uh, there's not really a standardized way to do this. You can manually expose functions from the host runtime. So various runtimes will give you APIs to map native functions and to uh, link them into WebAssembly. Uh, you could do this for your own functions that are shadowing uh, various GPU APIs. It's very granular and hard to maintain. You could export entire graphics APIs, like let's say you're mechanically translating DirectX headers uh, into something that's consumable by Wasm guests. This is a thing people have done. But uh, that in and of itself is a security issue because you, if you're running third-party code, there's nothing to guarantee that you can't access anybody else's resources that are on that GPU. Um, if you're looking to solve the security problem, you could mem copy in and out of Wasm linear memory. And so you could handle all GPU interaction host side in your host application. You could build virtual command buffers and likewise, but suddenly you can see a performance problem start to crop up here where if every frame and your hot critical path, you're constantly copying little bits of data in and, in and out of Wasm, just communicating over memory, uh, that can become very cumbersome very quickly. So we need a better way to do this. And uh, that's what we're looking to do. So. Uh, through the power of component model and WIT, uh, we have a declarative IDL that we can use to express things like host level runtimes to WASM guests. And so uh, we have mapped the entire WebGPU API and some other bits into WASI via the component model through mechanically translating uh, the web IDL uh, into WIT. So through this, we're able to, it's still in a safe, still in a sandboxed way, uh, expose these GPU functions into WASM guests. Why do we need this? Um, obviously, things are working as we've demonstrated in a browser pretty well today. Um, but I, I would say that Wasm is most useful as a compilation target, not as a platform in and of itself. And so because of that, you can imagine all sorts of apps when you think of different runtime environments that might need to interact with a windowing system or, or visual layers, composite on a canvas. And so if you look at use cases like UIs, anything like even this, uh, Actually, I'm in a browser right now. But if I was in a native app, something that would need you, that would allow you to uh, put data onto a screen, onto a computer. Headless graphics, headless rendering, for example. Um, if you were to look at things like server-side processes, maybe you're rendering in Docker through OpenGL right now, uh, the uh, frames, you're pixel streaming that back, or you're rendering images, or you're streaming video. Uh, that's not something you can do out of the box in a WebAssembly environment today. Uh, plugins are interesting, so we've got entire applications, but also if you're able to expose a portion of your app's internal object model to third-party code and allow it to mutate specific sets of resources on the GPU, it opens up all these different use cases for different types of computing. Uh, AI is probably the most popular use case for GPUs today. Um, we'll talk a little bit about it further in the talk. WASINN obviously is a, is a framework that many people are familiar with for uh, doing inference in um, WebAssembly, but there are other AI use cases that need lower level GPU access that might not necessarily be covered outside of the box. Um, general purpose, uh, you know, GP, GPU computing, scientific stuff, if you're doing maybe uh, CFD simulations, things of, of that nature, uh, you need access to a generic parallel processor. 
and a streamlined version of the WebGPU API into WebAssembly is a very compelling model to build those kinds of apps. Uh, and last, we want to hear from, from you, everyone in the community, uh, what other use cases are out there, because we want to make this a general purpose framework that uh, allows you to interact with GPUs for, for really anything in WebAssembly itself. All right. So let's talk about how WASI GFX is actually structured. So WASI GFX includes the following parts, uh, the following packages. Uh, WASI WebGPU, which is, as Sean just mentioned, uh, generated from the WebIDL, the WebGPU WebIDL spec. And there are some minor changes, but they're mostly the same thing, uh, at least semantically. Um, but WebGPU itself doesn't allow you to actually draw to the screen. Uh, if you want to draw to the screen, uh, that's why we have WASI Surface. And that lets you draw to the screen, get basic user events. You can think of it as a uh, very uh, basic windowing system, or maybe a little bit like the HTML canvas element. Uh, but it's fairly basic and doesn't come with everything that uh, canvas comes with. Now, how do you connect WebGP, a WASI WebGPU with WASI Surface? So that's why you would use WASI graphics context. And we'll talk in a minute as to why you can't connect them directly when you want to have this intermediate step. And WASI frame buffer. Uh, is a simple frame buffer API uh, for CPU-based rendering. So how do you connect this, these packages? So on the web, uh, there are uh, lots of graphics APIs, there are a few. There's WebGL, there's WebGPU, and if you want to draw with it, you would draw to an HTML canvas element. And there are, not, are no alternatives to that. But in WAS, you want to be a little more flexible. So we're starting with WASI Surface, but we want to allow future uh, windowing APIs. Uh, there may be more full features or maybe something for VR. So we don't want to restrict ourselves just to WASI Surface. And at the same time, we also have multiple graphics APIs. We're starting with WASI WebGP and WASI Frame Buffer, but in the future, we'll probably want to have other graphics APIs. So how do you make sure that we can take any windowing system and have it work with any graphics API? And that's why we have, we have WASI graphics context, and uh, it, all it does is just takes a windowing system on one side, takes a graphics API on the other side, and the host is in charge of making sure that these two work nicely together. So let's look at, at an actual example of this working. So WGPU is a, a graphics library in Rust. Uh, it, is the main, uh, it is the foundation of a, a lot of uh, uh, graphics libraries in the Rust ecosystem. And it looks, it's very similar to a WebGPU, and in fact, it can run on top of WebGPU. So the question is, can we run WGPU on top of WASI GFX as well and get an example running? And that's exactly what we have done. Yeah, so you can see it works really smoothly and Runs really nice. So, yeah, we can do it. I'll close it. All right. So, we've looked at an example, but let's look at how the actual infra infrastructure looks like for all this. So, let's start with the WIT generation. So, WIT is the IDL that we use uh, in the component model. So, we take the web GPU spec, which is written in WebIDL. We wrote a special tool called WebIDL to WIT and we convert the WebIDL into WIT. And then we do a couple of transforms on top of that. Uh, those transforms are mostly to remove parts that make assumptions about JavaScript or about the web. So we make sure to remove those because they just don't make sense in WASI. Uh, then on the guest side, now that we have a WebGPU.WIT, uh, anyone can target it from any language. And if you're Writing, uh, using a language that already has a standardized way of uh, dealing with WebGPU. Like in Rust, you have WGPU, and in native world, you have WebGPU.h. Um, in those cases, we're working on backends for those that uh, target WebGPU that way, so that your existing code just compiles uh, to WASI out of the box. On the host side, uh, you'll need a runtime that actually supports WASI GFX. We have a toy runtime, experimental runtime, called GraphTime, and all it does, it embeds uh, WASM time and WASI GFX runtime, which is our a runtime extension that adds support for WASI GFX. Uh, WASI GFX runtime itself runs on the same foundation as Firefox uses uh, 
for their web GPU. So it's a solid foundation. So we have looked at the architecture. We've looked at a basic example. But can we run a more complex example? So Bevy is this game engine in Rust. It's very popular. And it uses WGPU for drawing, but it has a lot more, a lot more moving parts and a lot of bells and whistles. And we set ourselves the challenge, can we compile a full Bevy game into uh, Wazi GFX? And as of last week, we have managed to do it. Takes a second to link. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yeah, so you can see it runs, you can play it and Hooray. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we spoke about uh, graphics, but what about AI? So if you've been following this, uh, uh, the WASI uh, ecosystem for a while, you've probably heard of WASINN. And WASINN is really great if you want to run oh, ML inferencing on a backend that they support, and they support most popular backends. And in those cases, you probably just want to stick with WASINN. You're going to have an easier time, and it's probably going to be faster. But what if you want to run uh, uh, a backend that isn't supported by uh, WASINN yet? Or maybe you want to do training or more likely tuning of an existing model, or you just want to have low level GPU access. Uh, that's where WASI GFX is your friend. In fact, you can implement WASI NN on top of WASI GFX. So for most cases, you would probably end up sticking with WASI NN, but for the cases where you want more control, you would uh, go with uh, WASI GFX. So let's look at a quick example of that as well. Uh, we'll try to uh, run inferencing of the image. Oh, I can change the light. Never mind. Okay, so we'll try to uh, classify this image. What is this image? So we see it's an airliner, wing, whatever. You want to switch back? Okay, actually, I'm... Oh, my <laughs> turn. Um, cool, okay, so we've looked at uh, some examples of building entire applications that are compiled to WASI GFX or compiled to, to WebAssembly and can run on a WASI GFX host. Uh, what about use cases for plugins or component-based architectures where we want to maybe give guests access to write into existing applications? So third-party code can often need GPUs. Uh, with Renderlet, this is something we're doing, is building uh, GPU portability layers that allow you to build plugins for things like design tools and games, et cetera. So uh, if you're to think about what a plugin model might look like for graphics, uh, first you'd have to kind of define that, that host guest interface system. Over here, we've got a series of components that are basically you know, shared within the WAS and bounds. Uh, we hook up an interface and an IDL between them in order to exchange data uh, across plugins and in the uh, host itself. Um, those plugins then are exposed and run through WASI WebGPU. And so with those, uh, you can create resources on the GPU, fully sandboxed, um, that are owned by the plugin and the app and that other plugins or other uh, applications cannot touch. And so then uh, it goes down to kind of the model of interaction between the host and the guest. And you as the author of a uh, host application would want to think about what makes sense for a plugin. So uh, for a game example or, 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 or an editor, maybe we want to give uh, plugins access to read portions of a scene graph or, or document model or different objects. Maybe those are exposed via textures or buffers otherwise. They can also be exposed to CPU memory, but um, you know, the specific value unlock here is being able to do those through GPUs. Uh, that plugin can write into specific defined buffers that are maybe created with, with limits uh, as to what the plugin can do. And then um, maybe the host app is rendering the data or maybe the plugin itself can actually render the data. It could write to a render target. Um, maybe it doesn't change render target attachments. Maybe that's disallowed, but it's given a window into a screen uh, in order to draw arbitrary content onto, onto a new canvas or an existing canvas. So there's lots of different ways this can be used, but as the author of an application, um, tools like WASI WebGPU give you the flexibility to decide what this kind of like granular interaction between a host and a guest might look like. Uh, we'll give an example of this with some of the stuff we've built inside Renderlet. Um, I'm going to do a demo, oh, I'm going to do a demo of something called procedural modeling here. Uh, so with this, uh, in a web editor here, like in something you can imagine like a design tool, we are going to uh, build a 3D model. And so um, there's 
better tools for this than this little view website. But uh, here, uh, through procedural modeling, we've built a series of mathematical expressions that allow us to generate graphics data. And so instead of like having somebody go and tweak and put a bunch of polygons on the screen and like Blender or something, we're going to write code that lets us do that. So uh, here I'm going to change this to extrude to the height value and you'll see, cool. So uh, we, we have taken a, a rectangle and we've grown it into, into a shape and you know, it's textured and colored and et cetera. Um, over here, we're going to go to another tab. Here's a more complete example. If you're to look at what a building might look like, we've got a series of steps and operations that define uh, both the uh, code that generates the graphics data for that, as well as the rendering pipeline. So how we might shade that, how that might look in a scene. Uh, another major addition here in the second tab is we have defined an interface uh, in terms of exports from the host to the guest. So we've said that this is data, we've defaulted it here, but we're providing from a host application that changes what is being rendered inside uh, this right now, this model that is about to become a plugin. So we can compile that to a WASM module. It takes a, a few seconds because LLVM is slow. <laughs> and we will download that. And I've already actually got an application over here in a VM that is designed to host these plugins. Um, so we've taken the same rendering pipeline that was there um, in the browser, and now I'm going to, uh, uh, I've already got it set up to load, I'm going to load that, and there we go. So uh, we just loaded a bunch of buildings onto this existing applications canvas, this is like a map viewer, for example, right? So uh, you can see these, these look the same, but different, and a few things have changed. For example, if you, they're, they're colored, they're sized differently, and so all these things were, for you to go back to here, like part of this plugin's interface. We're able to parameterize between the host and the guest uh, what we're able to use and how many times we're able to run and regenerate this data based off of this plugin structure. Um, so you can imagine, uh, you could take this, you could, you could build a lot of different kinds of objects, a lot of different kinds of scenes with this. Um, another interesting thing is, is that was unidirectional. So we just generated data um, in a sandbox way, put it on the GPU, the host app used it. What if we want to communicate back and forth between a host app and a guest? Uh, we got one more example here and I'll, I'll spare the details. We've written, a, we've added an expression to this here and so this is allowing us uh, write access into a shader the host is attaching. And in here we are performing some calculations that are going to do something very cool. Uh, okay, so if you look at um, you know, geographic scenes, uh, often you'll implement lighting models. So here we have like real-time atmospheric scattering, so as like the angle of the sun changes, it gets dark. But um, what we can do is as it gets darker, we can change the lighting inside the data that was generated. And uh, you know, th th thank you. It's very, it, it looks really cool, but all, all it really comes down to is this little chunk of stuff that's getting compiled in the WebAssembly module, and all we've done is, uh, I'm not showing the host app code, but the host app, we've mapped one uh, parameter in the shader's constant buffer. We're able to plumb that through all the way to the WASM module. It's able to take input, generate data, put output. And so this is all, uh, we're able to do all of this, the power of things like WASI WebGPU and in the WASI GFX project to host these arbitrary GPU components um, that are running graphics code. Okay, so lots of cool demos. I uh, wanna talk a little bit what's coming next for WASI GFX itself and the spec. Um, we need to finalize the actual spec and the wit. So this has come a long way in the what, year ish we've been working on this. Uh, it's stabilized a lot, but um, there's, we still want to hear from you. We want to hear from the community on what's missing, what needs to change, what needs to, to happen to make the spec usable for everyone. Uh, we're working on C bindings, so uh, the uh, WebGPU working group has standardized on a webgpu.h file uh, that they want to use for other language bindings as well as for C++ itself. And so that's currently being integrated into the various WebGPU runtimes, but uh, by us providing bindings for that, any, any app that is C++ or written against C bindings that can work against the WebGPU API will be able to work on a WASI GFX host out of the box. Similarly, uh, we demoed earlier the WASI GFX backend for WGPU. We want to com get complete support for that and get that upstream back into the WGPU project. Uh, and likewise for Bevy, this is kind of very early days with that, but we want to get uh, support upstreamed into Bevy engine as well. Um, the goal with all of this being take a game written in Bevy, you produce a, a WASM module with it, can run in browser, can run in a WASI GFX host. Um, 
we need to complete the runtime implementation of WASI GFX itself. Uh, kind of 80-20 rule here on this. Uh, most apps run, but there's a lot of very just low-level bits that are being mapped across, uh, you know, to the, to the WGPU as the runtime and across the WGPU.wit. So we're looking to get 100% compatibility with the WebGPU spec so everything uh, works as you would intend it to, and we're getting closer on that. Um, might have heard Luke's talk or some of the excellent ones today about what's coming with P3. With that, we're looking at getting async uh, for the component model. And so in WebGPU, uh, certain things are implemented as JavaScript promises in async APIs. So we want to bring full first class support to that into uh, WASI GFX and WASI WebGPU as well. Uh, and last, uh, a lot of uh, new cases that are coming in, things like accessibility and VR support, um, different types of input methods, and even uh, lightweight and full windowing in UI systems. So we do want to hear from the community on you know, what can be supported from the spec out of the box and what can be added to some of the reference implementations or even as third party components uh, to enable a larger ecosystem for, for this space. And that's pretty much it. So we're happy to announce that as of last week, WASI GFX is now a phase two proposal and uh, come a long way. We've still got a long way to go. We want to hear from, from the community. We, we would love help with implementation hear about use cases. Um, if you go there, there's some resources, including all the demos um, and some information on how to contribute. We meet every Tuesday, open meetings. Uh, we want to hear from you. I'm Sean. I'm Mendy. Thank you. And I think we have plenty of time left for questions. So questions, anyone? Someone want to run this mic down there? Thank you, David. Or in terms of Windows system, uh, are there any examples of running a like Windows system on WebGPU? For example, like a X server or Wayland server on WebGPU or something. Do you know any examples of running Windows um, system on WebGPU? Well, WebG yeah. Like X11 or something like that? Yes. I'm not aware of anything like that, but that would be really cool. There, correct me if I'm wrong. There's nothing technically stopping somebody from doing this. There's a lot of implementation work that would be necessary to support this. Yes, yeah. basically. Um, so no, we, no examples of it yet, but hey, community, come contribute. We want this. <laughs> uh, right. It can support it, yes. Thank you. Up here in the front, or oh, back there first. Uh, hello, thank you for the talk. Uh, I wanted to ask, so you showed how smooth it's running on GPU, but uh, have you guys compared like the same samples running on CPU? Like, I mean, I mean, do you see that it actually improves things or like there are like loads of optimizations needed so far? I think your render examples shows that. Yes, I have done, I was about to say don't quote me on this, but this is a talk that's being recorded. Um, I have done some, rudimentary benchmarking that is about 85% of native performance, um, like, like unsandboxed you know, CPU performance. That is a uh, highly variable, highly implementation dependent, asterisk, star, et cetera. Um, we need to do some, some much better benchmarking, specifically against, like I think on the WGPU side, specifically against WGPU. So um, I, I expect being in the state that it's in, there's going to be some performance hotspots, but I don't think there's any major technical impediments other than maybe some of the stuff we've been talking about with memory mapping that are standing in the way of, uh, of solving some of those problems. But I think the question was about CPU versus WebGPU, right? Uh, but I, I think Sean answered the question. Okay. Basically, yeah, like basically benchmarking GPU against CPU, like if you got improvement, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, my question is uh, sort of a follow-up on that. So uh, this is actually utilizing the GPU in the, um, like, let's say it's an NVIDIA GPU or AMD GPU. So uh, what performance, uh, so I want to see, like, if you push it to the limit, um, do you see, like, what kind of GPU utilization do you expect uh, that down the road this project will be able to achieve? 
And do you think there's a, um, a difference between uh, what GPU vendors you're using uh, on the client side? I'll take that. Um, can, sorry, what was the first question? Oh, uh, so uh, what kind of GPU utilization do you oh, expect yeah. this to, to achieve? Um, there are a couple of challenges that we have to overcome, like avoiding any copies. Uh, but if we overcome those, I think we're going to be close. Uh, we're not, never going to be actual, actual native, but I think we can come uh, really close because we're generating actual shaders. So I think the shaders are almost, uh, they do have bounds checks, but those shouldn't take too much. So yeah. I think we can get close. I, I agree. I'll, I'll just add to that that I think um, it's almost more of a fundamental question for both for web GPU and how it is implemented in the spec and for the web GPU implementations like WGPU, because ultimately we're just building on top of those. And, and also like the, the patterns, so like if, if apps are, you know, like for looping over massive scenes on the CPU, you're not going to have high GPU utilization regardless of what you're doing. But if you're doing GPU driven rendering, then, um, you know, and like support for that, like multi-draw indirect, I think just landed in Dawn this last week. So. Um, there's, there's stuff coming. I, I don't think, I, I guess to like more directly answer your question, I don't think the specific bottlenecks for GPU utilization are going to be because of our utilization of WASM. I think it's going to be like the underlying standards and implementations we are piggybacking on top of, as well as, as like the architecture of apps that are built on top of this layer. And not to say that there's no performance penalty, there is a performance penalty, but it's, it's you know, like per small percentages across the board, it's not fundamentally changing how apps interact with the GPU. Great, thank you. Uh, back there. Uh, on the performance note, like you were talking about the browser, like basically this as a JavaScript, uh, web GPU as a JavaScript API. So for Bevy or people using WGPU and like Rust now, um, do you expect that to get faster because it's not, you know, going from WebAssembly to JavaScript? Um, do you see that a path for that to get faster just in a browser? Like for the browsers to use something that's more direct? I think there's a path there. Yeah. But it's not happening anytime soon. Yeah, okay. Um, for in the browser, we will need JavaScript for the foreseeable future. I don't think there's anyone working on actively like avoiding JavaScript bindings. That's reality. Okay. Unfortunately. I guess it's sort of a question for like WASI in general. Would that like improve like interfacing as opposed to going to JavaScript? So if, if you're not running in a browser, then and you're running directly in WASI, yeah, yeah, yeah. then yeah. in that case, yeah, definitely you get rid of all that, those bindings. Got it. Like th there is a, maybe there is a future world where browsers actually support WASI APIs out of the box. Like that is, right. if that happens, that is a very long way off. Uh, I think we've seen some really interesting things as steps along the way that can still help, but those are specific to like MMAP and you know, like maybe some changes in web GPU API itself to like avoid shadow copies and UNT8 arrays. Yeah. Hey guys, um, I'm I'm trying to understand more of the difference between WGPU and WASI GFX. And um, I'm also trying to understand uh, where eGUI, uh, E-G-U-I, is at um, r relative to, uh, to, to what you guys are doing. So, yeah, that's a little bit confusing. <laughs> Similar names, different things. Uh, WGPU is a library, a Rust library, that is very much like WebGPU. And you can actually, Firefox runs a GP, uh, WebGPU on top of WGPU. So it's just a library. Uh, WASI GFX is a standard that we're working on, uh, which takes the web GPU, which is the web spec, and just brings that into WASI. So hopefully that clears that up. Uh, about eGUI, um, I actually have a local example if you want to look at it. Um, I'm compiling eGUI to WASI. E I tried to like mess with that a little bit. Y yeah, sure. Can you show it now or, or afterwards? Uh, let's do it afterwards. <laughs> it's on his computer, not mine. Yeah. Uh, yeah and and um, more specifically, uh, 
like, so like WGPU can run as like the backend in Firefox for WebGPU, or you can run it right now like in native code on, on like desktop, for example. Uh, what we can do then, but that's like untrusted, just like nati native, it's a native application, right? It's like what WASI GFX can do is as a WASI host, allow WebAssembly code to execute like in a desktop or elsewhere and, and access through the WebGPU standard WGPU's functions as well. So it's like a sandbox WebAssembly way of accessing WGPU. So you could do this today on native. This is a WebAssembly layer on top of that. 